everyone welcome back to another video so basically in this video we'll be learning how to launch a campaign in dv360 so we'll be starting from scratch okay so here we start from like creating new campaign so currently we can set the campaign name is to test overall objective of the campaign so what kind of goal that we are looking forward for this campaign like we have a brand awareness campaign where we want to build our top funnel so we can use something like raise awareness of my brand or drive online actions for if we have anything specific where we want clicks where we want certain kind of action to be performed on the website like a form to be filled or any other action like a sign up completion so we can do with drive online action or visit for drive offline or in-store action. So this basically works for offline stores, say a device, they are multiple stores. So if you're running a campaign for them and they want to target multiple store and later the user is getting converted at the store level. So we need to publish the offline data in DB360 to see what all conversions we are getting. And then we have drive app installation and engagements. So in app engagement, as you understand, like if you're running a campaign for Swiggy and simply we are promoting users to download the app or even sometime uh, if the users have not interacted for so long, so we can start promoting so that it can get back to the app again. So these are the major objectives that we can work on. So currently in this setup, I'll be doing on raise brand awareness for my brand and product. So KPIs that we can use with it is CPV. So if we are uh, preferring with a video campaign, CPM, if there is a cap or you want to optimize for certain CPM, then viewability, which uh, certainly plays a very good role. But in case we are just looking for views, uh, we can target viewability where we have a viewable impression for more than 80% or 90% or CPI ABC. So where we want to drive directly engage into any kind of conversion tracking even in the brand awareness segment cpa cpc as they are not performance like this is not a performance campaign and ctr so these are not recommended but definitely we can go with that because ctr is somewhere the goal of every campaign that we usually do so i'll just simply select with cpm as we'll try to make a display campaign here what is the expected uh, KPI that you are looking for? If you are looking for a CPM, so I'll just take a CPM of $8 maybe type of campaign. So in this setup, we'll just create a display campaign and plan spent. So this is actually optional. So we don't need to put anything on the campaign level because every budget is being controlled at IO. So even if you set something at the campaign level that will not actually control the budget. So it's up to you if you have a specific budget uh, that this campaign will only run for ten thousand dollars and then it is fine but if it is an ongoing campaign that you will keep on extending budget so it is better to keep the keep it open and we can set all the budget at io then we have planned dates so we can have a start date and same end date is optional because usually dv campaigns are endless we keep on adding up adding up so that that actually helps so we can keep and date as well so that is also fine so here are the io details budget that we need to add so even this say we have a budget of hundred dollars budget one i am keeping it start date from the very first day and then group id nothing so invoicing group id and external budget ids basically for the offline reporting part say you have filled in mechanism to invoice your customers so in that scenario we have an external group id where we can just pull in the report and upload it to certain billing softwares and that can be done or even if with the api that is possible frequency cap so this is one of the important thing that we need to take care so how many times you want to show ad to the user say if you are new to db360 or any programmatic platform so frequency you must have seen in meta ads because it is usually not visible or 
we don't actually see it in Google ads, though we have it, but it is not being what we look forward every time, like setting up frequencies and everything. So I'd suggest a frequency of five per week. That should be normal. We don't want to bug someone showing same ad again and again. And that also reduces the CTR and everything because engagement goes low when a user is seeing ad again and again. Even though we have different sets of creator, that should be fine. But if the same set of creative is being shown. So that becomes a kind of a spam. Then we have quality. So what kind of inventory you're looking forward to target? So all the authorized sellers. So authorized seller refer to all the inventory which is being sold directly to Google as in the edX. So that is for the authorized sellers and authorized and resellers. So even if we are getting from third party exchange, I would not like to name some, but any of the exchanges, then we can directly do that. Authorized and non-participating publishers. So non-participating publishers are those who actually have not authorized their ads.txt for Google, but their inventory is being monetized via Google via certain other pushbacks that we are getting. Say any other platform that is monetizing the inventory through maybe some other platform and that is connected to DV360. So we are getting that source of inventory, but they are not directly involved. Group deals, we have not, so ideally we have to do nothing in this, the, that should be fine until unless there is a specific guideline for it. Okay. Now coming to targeting. So these are the major parameters, which will decide the CPM that you would be having the kind of targeting would be involved here so for demographics. So ideally see, I have a campaign, which is for males. It is a shaving cream campaign. So I'll just target male and that to of certain age. So people of age of 18 would not be interested in shaving cream because of the current trend that they follow. So I would certainly be targeting 25 to 35 because people above 35 would majorly not be interested in switching to new brand if they are already using it. Parental status, I'll suggest if the budget is low, I'll prefer uh, not to touch it, but if we have specific budget, then we can surely do uh, some experiments in it. So that can be, we can set not a parent or a parent kind of thing. If we want to target a new generation, we can target not a parent. So that should be fine. Income group is if the product is premium, so we can target certain type of audiences. We want to tar target top 10, top 20 or top 30. So that is possible here. Then geolocation, that is geography, where the campaign would be running. If the campaign is being run in like India and not in Delhi. So I'm excluding Delhi, Mumbai. Chennai. So if you'll see on map, so what I've done is I've included India as a my primary location for targeting, but have excluded certain locations. If you can see things in red. So these locations I've excluded, uh, say I'll just exclude a bigger region so that it is better to understand. Mm, I'll exclude what Gujarat. Say we are doing a product where we don't have availability in certain states or we don't want to target certain states. See, so it should be clear now Like we are targeting India, but not targeting Gujarat. So you can see the bigger mark now. So that is actually helpful for you to every time do certain kind of targeting mix matches, even certain like targeting certain states and not targeting a particular city that is also pretty much fine. Then language. So what kind of language they're interacting on internet? So is it mixed? Like you only want to target people who use English online. So this is ideally the scenario that if the depends on what kind of product you're using for environment, like you want to show your ad on web or app. So the basic difference would be like, if you are running, searching something on Chrome or open a website like times of India and see an ad there. 
so on that particular website all the ads are being shown are web ads because even though you are doing it in a certain browser but that is a web ad but if you go to say swiggy and place a order after that you see some ads so that is app advertisement or any other website like you download the app of times of india and in that times of india app you see advertisements so those are app ads so we can remove app if you want to so it is sometimes suggested to remove ad because the kind of app ads are certain manner that we sometimes wants to exclude them say a lot of games they have lot of ads and that kind of inventory is majorly you are not looking forward to because that inventory has hook in it so we get a lot of clicks those are accidental clicks where user end up clicking because they want to skip the ad so that kind of scenario you want to avoid so we sometime avoid putting the ads into app okay landing page url so nothing here is required in like landing page url or something like that so this is more about creating the campaign so so how does the flow work so flow is we have a campaign we have io we have ad group and then ads so ad group and ad scenario only works in the case of youtube ads but for all other display we just have the line items inside it and on the line items we can simply select so i'll just directly move to uh, creating so post saving this we'll move